Okay, so the Western Red Seed has arrived, and I wonder if you can guess what I'm going to be making with that lot. I've just bought this from the local woodyard. I saw it before it went in the kiln. I'm going to break it into halves out here, just so it's easier to deal with, and machine it all today, and assemble it tomorrow. So there's quite a lot of components, including flooring and seating, and I don't really want knots like this in the staves, so, <clears throat> or possibly even the floor, but it'd be okay if it's incorporated in the seating or some of the structure underneath. So I'm gonna select the best parts for the staves, which are the cleanest of all with low knots. So I've got no idea if there's gonna be enough here, but obviously you split here, you don't want that. You don't want that knot in there, you don't want that knot. So the clean bit is here. I'm gonna cut that away. So the process for achieving the maximum amount of these boards, avoiding the knots, is first of all, just by eye, coming along here, we're trying to avoid these, get rid of this edge, live edge, and then the next cut, we're pushing the fence in to 140, and then start taking 140 strips, which will end up being 130 from the thicknesser, and eventually, 110 for the inside measurement of the uh, spindle molder. So that's stage one. We've got the staves, just about 50 odd. We need 55, uh, that's the offcut so far. And this, some of this is gonna go to make the seating and what's left is for the flooring. So now over to the planer. over halfway on the staves and that is the sawdust so far. So in 
case you've not seen a spindle molder or a shaper before, this is it here. It's like a really big router and you can see this set here is going to cut the male into the piece there. And then I'm going to change these over. Really simple. So you just buy one block and you can just change this cutter head. Very sharp. So you've got to be very careful. Okay, so slip that out. One is the cutter, one is the limiter. Replace this. Get it clean. It's the cutter. Goes in there. And the limiter goes in there. Drop that in. It's really good you can have multiple cutters and limiters for the same block. It really saves. I don't use spindle molders all the time. They're perfect for jobs like this or for maybe for windows and stuff, but I really don't do a lot of that. I do like it for shaping big pieces. So the limiter hits the piece first and just prevents you digging too deep, which would be really dangerous because you can imagine this thing spinning is a beast anyway. So you can see how that literally removes that profile in one hit. Because it's taking off such a lot of material, the safest way and easiest way to use it is one of these. So this swings over and just kick this in towards the fence slightly. Little set of wheels which we can switch on, little rollers. And, and that's going to feed the stock through at a consistent rate and also make it much easier and safer to handle. Okay, so we're onto the floorboards. I'll just give you a bit of a insight into wood selection here. So we've got a knot here, obviously, and we don't want that in the board. And we've got another one here. This is one of the big differences with milling your own lumber, because I can actually select that my cut is gonna be down there. That's gonna be one board, this side. And then, forget that, this bit here, this section is going to be another long board. So you can see there's a lot less waste. And in fact, the amount of waste coming off is really minimal. Um, now what that impact is, is obviously time. I've got to mill all this myself, but it is much less wasteful and much better generally for the environment when you're hand selecting and you've got the time to do this. That's one of the key benefits to buying this lumber, which they call sawn through and through, which is just basically the plank with the wany edge. And then you machine it yourself and you can go for this super cost saving, but time incurring selection. So the next set of cutters it's a groove, 10 mil groove, and the other set in the machine, the groove cuts that, which is your tongue, and then the tongue cutter cuts the groove, and then you get a perfect flush finish.
now preparing the staves, I'm going to have a 70 mil gap at the bottom to cover the base. The staves are 32 mil. So now I'm going to create a groove, which is going to be 32 millimeters wide and 20 millimeters deep. Now what I've got to do is take all that apart. I've got to install this in position because it's far too heavy to move. And now I can get on to building the seats. <laughs> 